for this example, uh, we're going to write a program where we're going to need a function that returns a value of a certain type. So let's go ahead and save this file. Okay. And here's the prototype for this one. It will return for now an integer. And let's call it uh, my data in as a function. And that would be the prototype. So basically it takes no parameters, but it will return an integer. Okay. And uh, which means now let's go ahead and define what that function does. Int my data in. And we're going to do, we're going to make it do something. So basically I'm going to have a local variable, let's say int num. And I'm going to ask the user to enter a value and then return that value back to whoever call my data in. Okay. So maybe something like this, printf, enter an integer, okay, and scanf, percent %d, and percent %num. Now, since my data in as a function will return an integer, we need a return statement. Return, well, guess what? We're going to return the value of num and close the curly brace. So something fundamentally different with this function than the other ones we've seen is that we have a return statement because we no longer have void in front of the function. We simply have a certain data type. It happens to be an integer. So this has to match. Num has to be of integer type. Okay. Now, let me compile this program here. Okay, so no errors. Now, if I run this program, it's not going to execute this. Remember, I haven't called my data in in main, right? So let's see what happens if you run this. You simply get press any key to continue because your point of entry for the program is in main. And the only thing that it encountered is a function call to system and it passed the value pause to it, which in turn will prompt the uh, press any key to continue message on the console with a blinking uh, prompt waiting for you to press a, a space bar or a key to end the program. And then that's what happens here. So now we need to call this function. But how do we call this function? Remember before, we simply wrote the function name. Let's go to the previous example, uh, like this one. We simply call the function name, right, with a semicolon. But remember this time, this function returns a value. What are you going to do with that value? You're going to have to receive it and do something with it. Aha. So maybe I need an int, my num, my local variable num here and then make my num, and this is how you call this function. My data in. So this is how you call the function. So this will be your function call. Now, why is this important? Because what happens here is once you call my data in, it's going to return the value num, great. It's going to return it when you guess what you're you're, you're in main. Who's going to re who's going to receive that value? It's this variable right here. Okay, so this variable here expects a value being returned by the function. Okay, all right. So now well, let's prove that that's indeed we we got that value. So let's go ahead and print print f. Uh, my data in as a function returned this value. And that would be a percent %d, put a slash n for a new line, comma, and then my num, my local variable that should have that value. Okay, well, let's see if this works. So let's compile and run. And notice now it's asking me to enter an integer. 
And the reason for that is we are in this line. We're executing this, which takes us to the definition right here. It says enter, oh, I have an extra E here, an integer, and we're gonna enter an integer. Let's say we enter seven, okay? And there you have it. So my data in return this value, seven. So my num now, right, in the print statement has the same value returned by my data in. Uh, let me fix some spelling errors here. Here you go, enter an integer. Let's rerun this. So you have to compile and run. Anytime you make changes, recompile, okay? The message is a little better, clearer, so we're gonna enter a minus one this time. And sure enough, in main, my num has the value of minus one. The question you might have now, can a function return more than one value? The answer is no and yes. <laughs> so no, it can't directly return a single uh, more than a single value, okay? Uh, so what if you wanted to return a whole bunch of stuff? There are different techniques for that. Maybe all of these stuff could be stored in an array and you're simply gonna return the address or the beginning of the array. You could do something like that. And that's for another lesson, okay? So for now, we now know that your function, like my data in, returns a single value of type integer, which happens to be a copy of what's stored in num. Num no longer exists. We call the scope of the variable, by the way. It no longer exists once you're back in main. It all, num only lives when my data in is being executed. So the num local variable in my data in has a scope or a lifespan within my data in. And after that, you no longer have access to num. So if you, for example, try to do something like this, num, right? Now, well, num was never declared in main. You will get a syntax error here. So the compiler is going to compile, uh, complain and says, I don't know who num is. And you say, well, I defined it here. Well, num is a local variable in the other function. It has nothing to do with my num, which is a local variable in main. The only thing that's common for both of them is the value that they're storing. And the way you created that common value is when you call the function. There is another way to call the function uh, without using my num. So let me show you that. So let me just um, comment out these two lines and show you another way to do this. Okay, so let me see here. And let me just remove this. There you go. So now these two are commented out. So I'm not gonna use my num, okay, at all. And the way I'm gonna do it is call the function in a printf statement, printf. My data in returned this value. So I'm gonna show you a different technique now on how to do this in case you don't want an intermediate variable in main to handle that value. You can call the function from within printf. Aha, so when it returns that value, it will put it right in this placeholder. So this way you don't need my num. So if in case you want to do this, my data in, call it, within the printf, this returns a value, but it will be placed within this placeholder, right? So let's try it out. So compile and run. And let's enter 99 and you get your 99 back by calling the function within the printf statement, okay, as a, an argument. And that's because it's gonna return a value. Great, but it has to be assigned to something. Either you assign it to a variable or to a placeholder here, like a percent %d within a print statement. So these two are valid solutions that you could use. Now, the reason you would use my num, for example, as a solution is in case you want that value 
to be reused somewhere else uh, downstream within the program. So I hope you learned a lot from this. The next thing we're going to do, the next lesson, is we're going to pass by reference, which means we're not just going to copy a value to another function, but we're going to actually send an address of a variable to another function. And that would have a profound uh, impact on how data can be handled. I will see you then.